I mean, we're kind of already doing the show. I mean, we were doing the show just off camera. I might as off well <laughs> do the, the show on is, camera. If a tree falls in a forest, does the tree really fall? And if the show is not live, is it really a show? <laughs> is it really? What is the no. sound of one hand clapping? And it's this. <laughs> That's exactly. And what is the sound of a uh, one one guy masticating at the beginning of Whoa. his video? <laughs> Whoa. Masticating. It's totally it's a legit word. It absolutely no, means I mean, chewing. <laughs> after after using your fold, I, I I personally probably have bigger issues with the masticating than with I, the other part I was of that about to say joke. the sh the the video really took a turn on on, on the with that uh, with that approach, but um, you know what? It's it's fun. It, I would say this is fun. I want to say, of course, thank you very much to everybody hanging out with us. It is, of course, uh, your. <laughs> I'll just do that right into the mic. That no, didn't really yeah. work. So no, it didn't do it. Yeah, it's no. I, I know. I know. I know the, the 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 sound that you're referring to. It totally makes perfect sense. <laughs> um, uh, it is uh, Thursday evening. Uh, today is the two, fourth, third. Yeah. What time is it? Yeah, it is the third. It's two the three. Third. Yeah, it, yesterday was two two twenty two. Um, Tuesday and today, two two twenty two Tuesday. Ab, yeah, is is two. is the twenty second also on a Tuesday? I don't or know. It, that would it, be a better two. It is. Oh, it is. That's going to be the fun one. Heck yeah! That's a real Tuesday. two two Tuesday. Yeah. Tuesday two 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 zero two two. Our yeah, show has already <laughs> jumped the jump the. <laughs> The track, our are, yeah, we're, no, we're, we're, we're off the rails. We, we're, we're kicking it off, um, <laughs> <laughs> kicking it off in a different direction. So um, I'm seeing a bunch of people in here that we've got Andrew, we've got Barry Johnson, we've got Tech King Mike, we've got Greg, we've got Ronald Sims, Mobile Opinions, Marty White, Kenny Man. What is up, everybody? Um, we've got some fun stuff to talk about. Absolutely, today. thank absolutely. you all for joining us, Ron. Ron Guido, good yeah. evening. Good evening <laughs> to you too, sir. And and uh, just you know, for Andrew's joke about raise your hands if you're snowed in. I hope everybody out there is safe. That you're well stocked. Yeah. You've got provisions. Um, I actually have the window open right now because we're starting to get a heat wave with the Santa Anas, and my office was oh, sweltering okay. hot today. Um, but hopefully, you and yours are safe and taken care of. You're not oh, facing any a... crazy random power outages or disruption of, you know, your local services. And, and, and if you are snowed in, we appreciate you taking the time to hang out with us <laughs> and just nerd out for a bit. Hopefully we can distract you from the snowmageddon that might be happening outside your window right now. Absolutely. And, and yeah, no, of course we're, we're getting interesting weather systems here as well, but it's not, uh, nothing like that. Nothing like what's going on in the East coast, of course. So hopefully, yeah, we got um, our weird monsoon rains, uh, last month. And so now, and, and this month, and we're talking 80 degrees next week for some reason. This, so we're going yeah. back. Yeah. It's just cool. weird. And, and as you mentioned, the Santa Anna's are coming back to kick us up back into higher temperatures. I know um, my allergies have been hell. <laughs> I've stayed inside most of the time, so I'm doing good. I've had to go out a couple of times to test out a couple of devices, um, you know, namely the ones that we're going to talk about today, like the Redmi Note 11 and, of course, the brand new Note 11 Pro 5G. So I finally got my unit. I was really excited to see that. And um, it, it just literally showed up this afternoon. So Juan has... Actually, Juan has... Well, you have the 11, right? Yeah, you have the... Uh, so this, is, have the this is the 11. This is the 11S, and I oh, did get okay. the regular 11. And like the true smartphone snob that I am, I'm setting up the S first because <laughs> it's the fancier one. Um, like a D these phones, I like the S's. The S's. S's, S's, S's. S's, S's. No, uh, these phones are flipping rad. Can mm -hmm. we just start the show off with like a little low budget phone love? I, I, I it, this, this is it, Xiaomi is an onslaught kind of company, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So going from the Poco M4, I just recently took some time to revisit the F3. That video literally came out today. Yep, a couple days ago, this box showed up with the the Note 11 and Note 11S. There, I'm sure there's like six other phones on the horizon. <laughs> They're going to be coming out. Well, so yeah, yeah. Redmi announced phone four week. phones. Yeah, they announced four <laughs> phones. So was it? So the Redmi Note 11 is a series. It's not one or two. It's four different versions. There's the it's 11. Four. And and you have the 11s, which is a little bit more into the mid tier of the mid of the, of the budget phones. Then there's the 11 Pro, and then of course then there is the 11 Pro 5G, the king of all kings. Um, because this one, and I'll say this though, 
the build quality between the 11 and the 11 Pro is like night and day. Like really? solid, solid, um, I, I, again, not you're going to cut yourself or anything like that, but seriously, like a solid build. And even though it's still plastic, it just feels much better. And it just mm. feels more like glass in the hand. Um, the fingerprint sensor is on the side as opposed to being in display. So it's very similar to the one that we saw on the, on the 11. It's, it's Which the is 11. the right way to do it. I mean, there's oh, really yeah. no point pretending that in display fingerprint sensors are ever good. Uh, no, and uh, and they're oh, I, always I do the worst. <laughs> And I mean that, I mean, objectively, we would all no, agree no, no. I, that there And I, I do want to comment real quick on something we talked about last <laughs> week that I did not get back. I tried replicating your video and I tried beating it. I couldn't. That's why you didn't see a yeah. video from me. You couldn't. Well, so the thing about it is every time I tried it, I would time it and I think I would do it right. I put it in my editor and I time it through the editor because I have one of those timers that goes next to mm -hmm. it. And it, it's not the right time. It's actually longer. So there'll be one or two times where I clicked it as opposed to just putting my finger on it and I didn't do it the right thing. Yeah. So I did it three to four times and I was like, okay, this is not going to work. So if I didn't do it better. Um, and I kept like trying different one. And obviously in display, it wasn't going to even come close. So I, I'm not going to deny. Yeah, you, you're... You're doing really good. Yes, Xiaomi does win, obviously, since I was trying to compare them. But uh, this is no different here. It, it works yeah. like, you know, the way it's, it's intended to work. Like well, you, and, it and just... it wasn't like I was doing that on a Mi, on a Mi 11. I, mm -hmm. That was my run on the Poco F3, which, funnily enough, the way that it handles animations, I actually think the Poco F3, in, in that kind of a no look, just how fast can you unlock your phone and get into it? I actually think the Poco F3 is probably faster Mm -hmm. than a yep. lot of the Mi 11s, just because it's not running. It, it, it's not trying to do any heavy hard. animation. Exactly. And, yeah. and it's not trying to push the pixels and run heavy, higher, higher refresh rates and all that. It, the reality is, it's fun to see smartphones at this price range get so many features. Um, we're talking about independent stereo speakers on, on the entire lineup um, and somewhere between 90 to 120 hertz, depending on the model that you're picking up. IR blasters, NFC, headphone jack headphone that is jack. in there, like seriously. Dual SIM with the memory card. Mm -hmm. Dual SIM with the memory card. So it's it's seriously, like it's hard to even, like how do you how do you try to even try to, I, I don't think you could try to nitpick I, something like this. You have to appreciate the, <laughs> the fact that it exists. <laughs> Right. So, I mean, it, it, again, this the, these types of phones, you know, here in North America, I feel it was like the Pixel 3a that helped us set a standard for mid rangers. And then you really wanted to say, like, you have to have specific reasons why mm. you want to move up from there. And globally, internationally, um, the the Red Me's, the Real Me's, the Nords are now setting a base level expectation mm -hmm. pocket computer that is it's just shocking. It's remarkable what that actually represents, how good that overall experience is. And now it's like you've really got to you've got to have a good reason why you would want to spend more than like three hundred dollars on on a phone. This average mm -hmm. consumer v dance that we see in videos like this is the average consumer tier. Yeah. You, the average consumer tier is easily met by a phone that retails MSRP at like. 250 bucks and you'll probably get it free if you just sign up for a low cost carrier service <laughs> like with like a tcl or something like that oh and, and tcl also makes some really good uh, uh, options i mean in 2021 i, I just in, in joining i was like i, re I realized i've forgotten them in my list of like redmi realme nord there was like TCL. another company i was like ah but TCL um, and alcatel oh, have been rocking the mid-ranger entry level for, for, for quite sure. some time. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And and again, it's a company like TCL and and real and Xiaomi uh, that can actually that have the the know-how and the experience to be able to produce content at devices like these and somehow still make money. I don't know how. I don't know really know how how they're making money on this. Because the 11 if I'm not mistaken, isn't it a hundred starts at $179? Like it's a sub $200. Yeah, it's a sub $200. It's um, and and that's at its base. It's, I mean, I, it, it's in starter Infinix territory. It is. It is. And that's what I mean, I'm that... <laughs> it, it's 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 less than like what LG K series and LG Stylo used, there, used there, to sit in. Xiaomi's it, having it's another shocking. It's a, it, they're having a very strong year again. This is the thing. This is what Xiaomi is known for. 2021 was an example. This is just a follow on. They're like, yeah, this is course number two, three, four, five. Watch us and we'll make sure we dominate. Um, I'm um, so far. Yeah. Biggest gripe so far for me. 
Uh -huh. Control Center sucks. I hate it. I, 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 I desperately need Android manufacturers to not copy the worst I, aspects of iOS. Okay. Um, uh, well, let me ask a question. Did you figure out that you can swipe? Okay. I just want, I just want one, I want my notification shade because it's, again, um, in all humility and humbleness, it's objectively better. It is. No, no, I, I, I totally agree. I think the split of the notification shade <laughs> is becoming it. more and more. No, I mean, this is Xiaomi's bread and butter. They've been doing this since me. Why? I want to say 10. Yeah, it's not something new. And, and the only thing that that kind of drove me oh, with so it I, is, is that I, when I swipe down and I let's say I swipe down the wrong side, I can just swipe away to the right or left to jump from one side to the other. Um, and it, it allow, at least kind of solves the problem. But yeah, you're right. The, the whole control center with the big buttons at the top with the little circular buttons in the middle. I feel like, yeah, uh, it's a it's a bit iPhone-ish. And, and I think we need to kind of, it, either way, it, yeah, it, it, it's me UI. <laughs> we could talk about it for hours. It's me UI. It's not changing. I don't think. Uh, but that being said, it really has been refreshing to see <laughs> how aggressively skinned and colorful and bouncy the animations are where mid-ranger SOCs are not struggling to present a really fluid overall experience. Six I mean, series, the the six series from Qualcomm, I think they've been pretty de pretty decent performance. Yeah, no, absolutely. The 690, 695, six, anything, any of the 69 series or six series, the higher end, uh, mm -hmm. have been powering a lot of these devices. I mean, all four Redmi Note 11s are powered by the same SOC. It's the configuration, the display, the storage. Are all four? I thought the base model was a MediaTek. Uh, I'm going to have to... Let me, let, me, let me get my 11 out. I'll start booting it up now. Oh, hold on I, I, thought, yeah. I thought it was the only one. I thought it was the one that was MediaTek and then anything that climbed mm. up. Nope, 680. I, mean, I was wrong. Yeah, I thought were, it was. They're were all right. six hundred. There, if I remember correctly, on the price point. You, you, you don't. You don't need to keep rubbing it in, man. I said I you were like, right. All right. Uh, Jeez, it's like you just stop yelling. And I'd like, like it in a poster. That that would make it better. But you know, <laughs> someone's got a screen cap. TK was right off of off of that. Just a big poster. You know, eight by ten. You know, feet. No. No. Uh, wait a minute. I had them reversed. Okay. <laughs> Note eleven S. Helio G96. Ah, okay. So the heel. So wait. There is one here? that was off. I was just uh, off. Literally, what? the phone that was in my hand was the one that I. Because so I'm I good at had... this. I'm really good at the tech. If you didn't notice this, it's. I I, I would still ask for the uh, the. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, let me see here. I think there was a tweet where they had all the specs and. Um, I wanted to double check real quick. I, th th there is, you're right. There is a little bit of a. a, a there's there's between. one. So I, something tells me that there is a price performance tier with the Note 11 S that they're looking at pairing with the 108 megapixel camera, but they're not stepping up to the Qualcomm, the more expensive Qualcomm SOCs. I don't mm -hmm. know. I don't. I don't understand why that might be their dividing line. Um, especially if we're talking about the differences in phones that that do or do not have 5G radio support, because that would be is that is that a separate modem on the 680? I want to say it, well, no. So the one uh, the the 5G is running a 695. It's not running a 680. So it's stepped oh, up to get the 5G. Oh, okay, uh, okay. So that might yeah. be like that might be why they're choosing one SOC over another if they need certain like ISP features off. I don't know. Now I'm just. I'm no, we're, like rapidly speculating. Okay, let me see here. Let me do this real quick. So um, this is the configuration, or at least the tweet that they put out roughly around the same time when they were posting the, the actual device. So you'll notice there's three different, there's four of them starting at 179. The 11S is that medium sweet spot, 249. Mm -hmm. And then you get the 11 Pro at 299. And then the Pro 5G is another 30 bucks. So their, their stepping mechanism is actually not bad considering it's really the not. 11S through the Pro are all 108. You're getting faster charging and a higher refresh rate displays as you go up but you mm -hmm. notice like it starts with all of them are 90 or above we're not running 60 frames per second everything is running high um and 67 watt 120 hertz refresh rate so the pro and the pro 5g i think the only difference is really the modem uh i think that's what it is but i'm not sure what the pro well SSC i just is. i just missed this a couple minutes ago but darren has excellent taste in phone ui mm -hmm. um, i just want to highlight this from darren even on me ui 13 
uh, which is based, based on Android 12. The control center sucks. So, so we don't even have that. We are, we're still running on all of the phones we have are ele on Android 11. This is MIUI 13 on 11. I'm just saying, on 12. I, Darren is totally correct. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's clear as day that Darren's opinion on this matter is absolutely the only take worth acknowledging it, he's right he's totally he is, right, he so. is he, it, it is it is in a very very acquired taste um <laughs> i'm feeling but, really but, spiky today this is going to be snarky one this whole this whole uh this whole podcast i fear well you know why don't we start talking about a little bit more snarky stuff why are you returning the phone? I'm just kidding. I know. I, I want you to return the Z Fold. Did you see? Did you see? Yeah. I mean, I, I want to get your phone back to you. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, my know, favorite know, one was like, uh, like was all of the outrage and incredulity. There was someone who was just like, how can you even return a phone? How can you even send it back? And you're like, do you, do you not understand how, like, oh, we got the phone. Uh, well, it also, have you never heard of someone buying a device and returning it? How do you even send it back? I'm so nonplussed and confuzzled by your title. I, um, I, I, will, I will say this. Um, there are certain parts of the world, and mm -hmm. this is mostly because I was having... I don't know why I had this conversation with my mom uh, we, about a couple of days ago or so. I was talking to her about return policies and so on, how it's always, always frustrating for us back when we lived in Lebanon that we could never return anything. Like, till I came to the U.S., the returning a return policy never existed. It was never something that actually mm. registered for me. Um, and then my mom was telling me that recently, like a few years ago when she was there, that only the very expensive stores in Lebanon now allow you to do returns. But little stores like mom and pops don't do returns anymore. So gotcha. I, I, I don't know where this gentleman's coming from, you know, if it's a, if a dude or a dudette, I guess. Um, but I would probably say the reality is, I mean, something at this price, you need to be confident and comfortable in. And if it's not something that's worth it for you, I did the same with the Z Flip 3, right? I mean... Yeah, I like the phone. I I totally understand, and I see how Samsung is going to succeed at making mm -hmm. foldables more affordable. And I know that this is the one that's going to sell. But then when I used it, I just could not put my. I just it did not fit my functional For being, sure. and I, I feel like the Z Fold Three is similar. It it has to make sense. I, it has I, to work I, for you. It's interesting. You know, I can't be clearer that these are all like the most personal reasons for why I do and do not like certain devices. I'm not trying to review it for the average consumer because that consumer does not exist. Mm -hmm. There is no one who's only covering the grossest, lowest level, all agreed upon basics of smartphone communication and is also looking at dumping $2,000 on a folding Plus, tablet. Yeah. You know, so, so that's, that's a non-starter. As soon as you say average consumer or what the expectations of the average consumer might be, and you're talking about a foldable, you're talking about unicorns. Like, that's just not a thing. And, and so it's, it's totally valid to sit there and say, like, there are some incredible improvements. I think Samsung absolutely needs to be commended on the numerous engineering challenges that they've tackled. But just like the Duo, this is just a different flavor of a folding beta test. We, mm -hmm. you and I, have spent thousands of dollars <laughs> on literally, supporting. Literal, literal yes. thousands of dollars. We're not talking yes. figurative. Literal. The duo and, and one over the, over, full price. Over, over the last two generations, too. Oh, that's right. <laughs> that's yeah. I forgot about that. We've been doing this for a few years. Dang, We've been doing man. this for a while. Um, are we, are, so, are so we there's like massive suck. No, I'm just kidding. I was going to say that. No, but, that, but that's just it. Is like, just like I was with Focals by North, just like I've been for any other type of exciting or disruptive technology, it's the same here. I want to contribute so that I have some say in what really happens here. I'm not going to Best Buy poking a broken display model with a finger for two minutes and then going, it's not good enough. It needs to be better before I'll buy it. No, I want to be a part of this process and I want to have a meaningful conversation about that. But to that same Absolutely. token, it's just like, I'm sure you're going to be happy to finally part with my Duo 2 and get it back to me and we can we can kind of share some of those thoughts I'm, next week I'm, when we see I'm, I'm happy. face to face. Oh yeah, that's right. Speaking of which, yes, would like uh, for, yeah, sorry, uh, big good announcement 
Good, perfect timing. Thank you for the segue on that one. Uh, uh, so next Friday, sorry, next, next week's show is going to be on a Friday. So it's going to be the morning. And we're going to have it as, as an in-person show. Uh, one's leaving viewers befuffled, <laughs> bamboozled, even possibly even flabbergasted. Completely uh, confuzzled, Jeff. That's, Just how, so that's, that's confuzzled. how Juan does it, though. That That's how he does it. He, he If he doesn't go for kerfuffled or anything, like, anything you know, Anything below <laughs> kerfuffled, I don't think he does. I'm all about the tomfoolery, the clowning, the monkey <laughs> shining, and the shenanigans. It's it's how we do. It, it is. Um, but yes, so um, next Friday, next week's show will be on a Friday uh, in the morning, 9, 10-ish a.m. in the morning. Yeah. We'll have to figure out the timing between uh, Juan and I. Uh, and it'll be in, a per, in person for the return mm -hmm. of the... Um, I don't know why, I just air quote. I don't think you even saw the air quote. It's outside of the frame, but anyways... Um, I'm a little bit, I'll say this, I'm not sad returning the duo, I am sad returning the Vivo. And not that I meant to make that rhyme, but that's how it came out. Um, and that's, and then I'll say this, it's your fault. It's absolutely your fault. Because I don't, I wasn't expecting to like it as much as I do. I honestly wasn't because I've never had Vivos before. And I assumed that this was just going to be honestly, you know, like it's a, it's it's literally the best. It'll have like, no, it just like it worked in, all, in every single scenario I threw at it. It worked. It didn't like I've shot so much content and I've produced so many videos off of that phone, off of that camera sensor on that phone um, from CES, from reels, from editing, posting, uh, producing. Everything works. It's so good. And it is so. Oh, yeah. My God. Yes. Yeah. So so, so yeah, I'm we're gonna, gonna have be, some weird. I'm gonna be sad <laughs> to return your Mi 11 Ultra, but I'm also really happy to be getting I'm, that to be Vivo able. back. No, it, it's it's funny where you know obviously the Mi 11 Ultra is now it's 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 a year old now. It's just about a year it's old. A it came out. Phone? I think was it in February of last year, roughly. There is and nothing I... on the horizon that makes me feel like the Mi 11 Ultra is a year aged phone. Like it is brilliantly competitive, powerful, gr grotesque smartphone overkill today. And just and, uh, as and it and probably I, was a year ago. And it is going to be one of the first devices to receive uh, the MIUI 13 yeah. on based on Android 12. So that was the the one that Brandon was mentioning before. Um, uh, Darren, sorry, not uh, Darren. Brandon. Um, and so yeah again I'm, i'll be very it's going to be a weird emotional uh you know <laughs> returning kids back and getting some kids i don't know it's going to be interesting but it's funny like we made such a big deal out of the folding phones and it's like oh it's the camera phones it's the camera, the camera phones, phones. <laughs> yeah 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 well but because i think the last challenge we did or the first challenge we did was purely focused on productivity yeah the we've gone from you know the, the, that that staging of having you know at the time i think when we were doing it the duo wasn't really known for its cameras it was really more for productivity for multitasking the cameras were there they were okay actually i'm sorry camera not cameras i don't know why i said <laughs> my camera it was a camera it was a selfie camera built in and that was it um so it was really more focused there and i think when we threw in the other two devices because we we wanted to play with each other such a great skin um it, it changed things on it and then again like i said when we went to see when i went to ces I took the Vivo with me as opposed to obviously the the Duo because I didn't feel like it was worth bringing so many, um, and it that's when I t that's when it took me to the like oh my god oh my god every day day in and day out I would walk out I would have my um, Pixel in the front pocket and I'll have my Vivo in the back pocket now I didn't have any SIM cards in the Vivo, but I connected it to Wi-Fi and I was it was all day it was an all day type of phone, and I produced literally all my so all my good. reels from that. So it's uh, the hardest part to kind of get across to people where when you step outside, when you because because for both you and me mm -hmm. and, and for a number of the people that are that are kind of hanging out in this chat, I, I feel like there's a tendency to sort of cater towards something that's familiar. And the mm -hmm. Vivo is very disruptive to that. It's yeah. only familiar if you liked the funkiest LG devices like it, it, I mean, even just talking about the camera, I mean, like, there, there are literally six different permutations of just your basic touch shutter, get auto, mm -hmm. HDR photo, like, that, that's a flow chart, you've got to keep straight in your head is HDR, HDR off, Zeiss color options, oh, and then, yeah. 
I can turn them all off or I can turn them all on. If I go into the pro mode, I've got two different flavors of raw files, let alone the Zeiss color processing for the JPEG be doing for the portrait modes and you sit you have to kind of like flow chart your way all through that too and when when you just pick it up and you're not depending on it for anything that's intimidating it's unfamiliar and that makes people's brains cranky yep when you force yourself to take it into a situation where you've got to rely on it and you figure out like oh i need this for this i need that for that and i can rely on situations and then you kind of see oh there's a genius here it's messy and it's sloppy and it's a little raw and it's a little unrefined, but it genuinely is giving me all of these options to do the stuff. And it's not treating, it's not like condescending. It's not, you know, holding oh, my I, hand and a acting like I'm a child. It's saying, <laughs> do the thing. I, I might not be able to help you figure it out, but I'm going to give you all the tools to go yeah. do the thing. <laughs> and, and But that's what it is. It, whenever... Whenever you buy a camera or even if you start using a new camera system or some type of a new system, you have to in, in you have to immerse yourself in the product. You have to live with it, yeah. use it, make the mistakes, learn from the the, the, the system. Because it's not like it comes with an instruction manual saying, if you'd like this, you just need to collect, click, click, click. You have to try, oh. you have to play with it. Oh, and the Vivo like has no safety net for that. I mean, they've got like some, like in the promo, they've got like some of those basics, like these are the different settings that change your exposure and stuff. Th there isn't a good way to encapsulate what happens if you choose HDR color processing with the Zeiss, I mean, sorry, a HDR exposure settings with the Zeiss color processing versus disabling the HDR and leaving Zeiss on. I mean, like, there's no way to spoon feed someone through all of those flowchart individual and granular metrics. No, absolutely, it's hard. Yeah. But it, it's it's shocking how like it took me about a day, and I'll admit, I live in phone cameras n in no way, shape, or form resembling average, and I'm sure you don't live in your phone cameras in any way, shape, or form that resembles average. Absolutely, but where I can pick up a pixel and it's a pixel and it's a pixel and I know how pixel pixels because I can pixel. The Vivo took me a day of wrestling with it. And then it was like, oh, I wanna take a picture of this crazy fallen log. There's sunset light hitting it at this angle. And I know that the Zeiss color is actually gonna come out really warm, golden hour. That's mm -hmm. gonna be cool. But when I turn over and I wanna take a portrait of my daughter and she's in shade, that's gonna look funny. So I go ahead and tap it just as I'm lining up the shot to take it. like. It's like I stopped thinking about what do I need to do for here, what do I need to do for there, but I needed to fight the phone for a, a, a solid day of shooting before I started to get a feel for what that really looked like. And that's that it was it was very very much that experience for me. It took me a little bit to get used to it. And I can't even uh, imagine like on a show floor with all of that mm -hmm. kind of lighting too, because that is Every, one of it's so strong. The, it is uh, such a strong phone indoors. Sam, Sam, Samsung, in um, in in true fashion, decided to go black and blue. Uh, so you had blue tones <laughs> everywhere, uh, and then uh, so uh, I'll, I'll say this: I was looking, I was taking pictures of the Arc, the new monitor that they did, the mm -hmm. one that kind of looks like two of these, the ones that behind me. Um, and I, I was seriously like I was taking some reels. I took pictures. The videos, the the uh, the focusing options, the low light performance is crazy good. Yeah. Um, it it really was competing with my A7 the the A7 IV that I had with me at the time. And for some shots, I honestly chose the phone over the A7 IV mostly because by the time it took me to take the A7 IV, mount it on the tripod, put it up, set up the tripod, do all of that, I would have just been on and I was basically just just jumping in and then getting out because um, Samsung of all the booths that we had in there was the most uh, packed because they mm -hmm. didn't have it open, uh, very much open air. You had to kind of make reservations to get in. It was walled all around and I felt like just it was getting a little bit too... I don't want to say crowded, which is weird because that's what CES is about. But I, I, you know what I mean? It's like, this yeah. is the weird, this is the year where I felt a little uncomfortable at CES because everywhere else around the Samsung booth was like ghost town somewhat. Yeah. You could walk, you wouldn't hit anybody. But in, Sam, in the Samsung booth, you were like buddy, buddy with people. So, um, but anyways, I, I can't say good enough. I am going to be pushing out a video on, on the X70 Pro Plus as well as the, uh, um, the Duo next week. Um, and I, I, I do want to talk to you a little bit about 
trying to do something. I would like to put a video on the duo, the find and the fold together, but I'm trying oh, yeah. to figure out if I can do the content. I may be able to do it without having the units together and then I'll do some B-roll when we're together um, at the park. For sure. Yeah. So. Definitely. Long story, long story, long. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, kind of circling back, I mean, I think this is what's been so rich as we got to the end of last year and we're starting to see some of the early entries this year. The premium smartphone market has me a little anxious. Um, I, price still, to performance and, yeah. and, and, and figuring out what manufacturers are going to do where I can see some benefits for very specific activities. Mm -hmm. I think gamers are going to have a real good year if they like to stress premium top dollar phones to play games. I think this mm -hmm. is going to be a solid, solid year for that. That's a niche of a niche. Mm -hmm. That's people who can spend a thousand dollars on a phone and spend a thousand dollars on a phone with the eye to stress their phones playing really graphics intense games. Um, I think they're actually going to be in for a pretty solid year. I feel for a lot of consumers who were considering the premium tier, a lot of what we're seeing is going to feel like a lateral move from where we were last year yeah. and yeah. might not really be a tangible real world improvement over where we were two years ago. And I think no. that's yeah. dangerous territory for the most expensive devices because of this kind of uh, so, sort of the, the evolutionary step we're in right now not being conducive to, to efficiency. And this is a huge opportunity for mid-rangers to come in and, and, and offer up you know, uh, lifestyle features at remarkable prices. I mean, it's, it's a critically exciting time, not for the phone that I'm gonna own, but I think for all the phones that I would recommend to family, to friends, people looking for competitive options, people looking to save money on their next phone purchase, that's, I'm, I'm like, I can't tell you just, I feel like Crazy Eddie. Oh! you know it's just so exciting like there's i've got a desk full of just amazing competitors at stupid low prices i'm a little worried like where will i find my laptop replacement but mm -hmm. that's okay i'm excited for all the other people that are out there trying to be a bit more budget conscious and I, and I think this is the, the reality. I mean, we need to keep in mind that, the, as you said, the average consumer doesn't live in the S series, doesn't live in the Note series or the Fold or the Z Flip series. They're really more into the five to 600 at, at the most and realistically trying to make it yeah. where it's an affordable purchase that will last them for the next few years. The S29, or sorry, the S22, not the S29, the S22 right now for me is a very, it's, a, it's going to be a confusing year. It's a, it's, as you said, incremental upgrade from last year, maybe the year before as well, especially for the entry to two lower end models. The higher end model for me is, it is somewhat of a new device because it's being named different, but I don't understand why we are making I don't it sound there's, like... Wait, there's the S22, the S22 Plus and the Note 22. I don't, I don't know what, what do you mean? <laughs> Somebody, somebody in the uh, in the naming department made a mistake. They put an oh, S twenty two Ultra. As they to invented a whole. It's it's like how Brontosaurus used they to be the an Apatosaurus body with a camera sword skull. It wasn't yeah. really a different dinosaur. I got you. It it's it's they they renamed the phone into another phone and they took it away. And it, but I don't want to make it into a Samsung conversation. It's just I feel like it's a it's a confusing lineup, <laughs> and is. we are getting into it. And I I forgot who it was. Um, I was saying yeah, Gabrielletta was actually saying I can't wait for Samsung to wait, you know spend fifteen minutes explaining how they invented a new color. Probably they will invent another color. They're gonna start pulling you know a la Apple uh, type mm -hmm. of announcements every year every time they go on stage. Yeah. Um, We'll have to see how that goes. And I don't want to give that too much attention because the reality is the ninth is coming around. We'll find out and, and, I'm, and yeah. we'll all we'll see how things go. Um, one thing I did want to talk about, which is I know we talked, we have a lot of things in the, in the, in the title. I noticed that a, way more people are start, are buying more OnePlus 10 Pros this week than last week. Like yeah. last week we talked about it, but even more people are getting them. Um, I don't know. I, I, I still don't know if it's the right thing to do. I'm personally not going to. Uh, it, it just to mm -hmm. me, it doesn't make sense. But um, I'm even. I even. Saw oh, you some mean the doing the import or? Yeah, no. It just like I'm. I'm talking even when I say more people. I'm talking about even some of my buddies in the Middle East are importing the Chinese gotcha. variant yeah. um, and covering it as as if it's a phone that is available for anybody to buy. Um, I, I I understand the the appeal the mm -hmm. the. 
the the wanting to be able to check out what the new OnePlus 10 does. Um, and hopefully at some point we'll get a chance to play with it and we'll get a chance to you know give our opinions mm -hmm. on it. Uh, but it just found it to be even more, you know. Um, yeah, more, you see it show up on so Flossie like... Carter's channel, and you're like, I get it, but yeah, no, I kind of feel a, a lot of this, especially when it's a more Western attitude an, or a North American reviewer. To me, it does feel a little like the main thing I contribute to this conversation is I yelled first. And and I think that's all it is. This is purely that. And my question would be: Is are they going to give? The phone, the the true North American or even international variant of the OnePlus 10 Pro, that right. that that attention that they just did, are they going to do an unboxing and do all of those videos that they're trying I'm, to do right now? I'm not calling out anyone by name, and just because I recently referenced Flossy, that wasn't this isn't what I'm saying of Flossie no no, no I, yeah this process, is not a, but but I I worry or I shouldn't say I worry, I'm cynical and I'm sardonic regarding the reviewers who are picking up that kind of phone hardware today out of that region because i don't believe they really would have reviewed the international version any differently do you know mm -hmm. what i mean I, mm -hmm. I feel like they wouldn't have lived with it they wouldn't have waited for any updates they wouldn't have followed the progress or the improvements they wouldn't have talked about real lifestyle stuff they would have shot really pretty B-roll and like held the phone for a couple hours. And what they contribute to the conversation is first. That, yeah. I mean, that, that, that's it. So if that's all they're going to do with the, the sort of the Chinese color OS variant, it's functionally no different than if they had waited. Uh, it's, they're only doing it so they can score earlier hits at the hottest part of the algorithms ranking for that topic as ad revenue. And that's, and, and that's about it. There's in typical, most other creators, like the average person that would probably want to buy the phone won't have access to the phone. And so there isn't, like you said last, I think it was, it, I don't know if this was during your live stream where we talked about it here, where there's that nice, there's that, uh, there is that part of the algorithm where it recognizes before a phone is available, where there it's basically high, right? Where it's mm -hmm. the demand for conversation, the demand for content. They want the leaks. High. They want the rumors. They're, Absolutely. I mean, people are, and the are moment thirsty the, for it. The moment the phone shows up in an actual person's hand, all of that goes out Whew. because at that point, the algorithm is no longer it's like, oh, it's not exciting anymore. Let me move on to the next thing that's not out yet. So... Uh, I think that, like I said, it, I understand why 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 some creators are, are doing it and why where they're going with it. I I chose not to mostly because I wanted to, my conversation on the 10 Pro to be when it does happen um, yeah. to be on on something that somebody can actually purchase. For sure. And something about something uh, for for a device that makes sense for you know, and they, they'll have a reference point also, to, you know, because oh, I can go into the store, I can check it out, I can see where things are. Right now, everybody and anybody that's looking at it. We don't know when the international model is coming. Could be next month. Could be this month. It could be mm -hmm. MWC. We don't know. So the reality is, um, this staged release after Oppo and OnePlus kind of started to be more cohesive has has messed things up that were already kind of in a weird well, position to I, be in. I, I think, and 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 this is you know again I'm I'm going to try and not to suck all the oxygen out of the room because I, I, I popped in on uh, Scott Peachy's oh, live man. stream. I was I was lurking in his comments, just like pounding out replies in his chat. And you're like, you know what? I don't think he, I don't think I am putting my best self forward when I'm lurking in the chat. Cause I don't think people can see the mad grin I've got on my face as I'm typing these comments. Like it just reads like, I'm attacking the hosts. <laughs> so he offered to like, well, Juan, if you want to jump in, why don't you just jump in? And I was like, you know what? Actually, I will take you up on that because I feel I'm coming off as a bigger asshole than I usually do. Um, so jumping in there, one of the things they were talking about, and it's something I'm so deathly tired of in the techie conversation is this idea of OnePlus has totally lost their way. OnePlus just can't do anything right. Mm. I mean, OnePlus is failing their diehard fans. And you're like, OnePlus is up. Uh, for third quarter, 2021, they sold 700% better 
than third quarter 2020. Globally, 2020 to 2021, sales are up 250%. That is a massive year Second year half 2021 compared to second half 2020, European sales up 150%. If I had any perspective of, of market or business, I would be screaming, avoid the Android enthusiasts, sell mainstream, <laughs> because no, that's I, how a business is going to improve. And, and, and that's what and, we've and, seen. And them. so yeah. with, with the OnePlus 10, I feel like they're actually adopting a bit more of a Sony strategy. Yeah, we know yeah, there are going to be supply chain issues. We know there are going to be distribution issues. You go where the market is going to be hottest. You you satisfy that market because you know no no one plus ten pro is ever going to sit on a shelf and gather dust when they sell in these like what I mean they're they're only like putting out pre orders twenty thousand units at a time right. Mm -hmm. So the so first twenty thousand batch sold out in one second. The mm -hmm. server barely had time to refresh that the phone was available before the entire first batch evaporated. And that to me is a better strategy. So n miss me with this, but the passion or the Android enthusiasts or the fans that kept the brand going, they're all turning on OnePlus. They don't wanna see OnePlus be more successful by catering to a more mainstream product category. You know, I think everybody misses the point of that tech alter video, mm -hmm. how your enthusiast brands will betray you. They stop right there. The enthusiast brand did betray me. No, 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 no. Either a brand pivots and they find some success in the mainstream or they disappear. That's yep. it. That's your choice. No, exactly. And it, yep. it's kind of like being the jerk who says like, oh, I liked that band before they, were, before they sold out. I liked that band when they were cool. It, it's, a, it's a tough place to... I mean, we... The, the weird part about it is it's not like OnePlus was never telling us it, it, it like year over year what they're planning. <laughs> the is. OnePlus 7 was literally like, we've got a OnePlus 7, that's the cheap phone, and a OnePlus 7, 7 Pro, Pro. That's, that's the one mainstream you want. premium. No, no, exactly. And and <laughs> so the reality where where we are right now, it's, like I said, it, it, I, I definitely, I would love to be able to check out a OnePlus 10 Pro. I would love to see how that works. Uh, and how things are going to be, and and maybe maybe they'll have some units at MWC, which I don't know if I kind of mentioned to you. Uh, it looks like I am going to be able to make it to MWC, so I was able. You're going to gonna go? Apply. Yeah, so I got Good my credit, you, my credentials, and I was able to find a sponsor. Which um, I'm, I mean, I'm in the process of finalizing the paperwork for that, but nice. I, I do have somebody on the hook for. That's great. So hopefully, I'm really glad to hear that. That's going to be good uh, for you. It it's it's going to be crazy. Last time I was there. It was pre-COVID, and I was there by myself for a week. So this week, I, I, I don't know. I, uh, there's a whole bunch of people. Obviously, I'm hoping things. You know, there'll be some people showing up. But it looks like it is going to happen. There hasn't been any conversations about trying to just keep it virtual and so on. So, but I'm hoping we'll get a chance to see it, and we'll. I'm hoping to also see some of the other options available. But I think the reality is, it, it's like me very. You know, when I covered the Find N, when I'm covering it. I always make sure to explain that this is a this is a phone made for the Chinese market. It is not a yeah. phone that you'll be able to pick up. And if you do pick it up, this is what you should expect. But understand that this is not meant for our market. It is their vision of it. And if if OnePlus may be bringing it to the international market at some other point, maybe then we'll have a good solution for maybe the first foldable OnePlus. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, it, it's a tough one. And I, and I just like I said, I would love to see the love that we're seeing right now poured over to the units that people can buy. Because that's what you want to review: the camera performance sure. on the on the OnePlus camera app, not on the Oxygen OS, uh, not on the Color OS app version of it, uh, and showcasing features that are only available on on OnePlus, like the color scheme. I saw one video that was showing in there; they were talking about the color picker. That's not part of an <laughs> Oxygen OS build. That's a Color OS feature that never crossed over, and the unified OS system between o, uh, you know OnePlus and Color OS and and Oppo are not. From what I've seen, at least, it doesn't seem like it's going to be coming up uh, in the OnePlus 10 Pro. It's going I to be later on. I just feel like, I mean, and, and again, speaking to that point, those those little touches matter. And when we get the more international flavors, there's mm -hmm. there's those little touches that 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 delineate. I mean, they're small, but they're subtle. They're nuances that that I feel help people make those kinds of purchasing decisions. But I'm, I I just want to touch on this because I I need to be very 
careful about how I say this, but Mobile Opinions writing, do you believe people don't see OnePlus because the market share in the US remains low? Um, I feel it's a, it's a very Western perspective and it's a very especially North American perspective where the carrier influence dictates the popularity, the popularity dictates the algorithm, and then the algorithm is what's responsible for how you get paid. So one of the things that I think has been kind of an ugly look for OnePlus specifically though, this current flavor of, oh, the opoification of OnePlus and how OnePlus has lost their way starts to veer. I'm not saying everyone is doing this. I'm, again, I'm not trying to name names specifically, but it starts to veer as a little distastefully xenophobic. Mm -hmm. And I've had oh. people in my comments being like, this is just Chinese garbage now. Mm, and you're like, uh... the, the OnePlus is a Chinese manufactured phone. Oxygen OS has not been stock since, what, the OnePlus 7. They've been sprucing up Oxygen to be stock plus since then. Oh, a yeah. Chinese developed ROM. And if you really sit back and you look at the, the lineup, the portfolio of Oppo... Vivo and OnePlus, those operating system skins are are all different, but they're all really good. They've gotten so, so much better. Seriously, Fun OnePlus Touch, had, Fun, yeah. Fun Touch got real good. <laughs> <laughs> it got fun. I so want to say the Fun Touch is fun now. Uh, no, uh, yeah, yeah, no. It, it the Android twelve. So and, and you'll get a chance to see it with the Vivo. I'm yeah. assuming you. I'm assuming you got it on the X70. Is that why? You. It doesn't. X70 Pro has not has not flipped over. It's still on Android 11. Okay. And I really think that that's just a regional issue. The X70 Pro Plus is probably going to slightly different regions than the X70 mm -hmm. Pro, and for whatever reason, mine hasn't flipped over. So. It, it's, it it is what it is. It will soon enough as the as the Pro Plus comes back and and I yeah, will sure. sure. I, I have a feeling Juan's gonna grab that phone and like grab it and put it back straight <laughs> to his chest. <laughs> yeah, and this is gonna be like a little dust outline of me running away. <laughs> and, and, and it'll be like and that that that's the end of the show. Uh, Juan took his phone back. What happened? Uh, so I, I did want to ask. I, I, so I do want to ask a question. I know you dropped the phone uh, the video earlier um, on on the Patreon for the F three on the Poco F three. How has it been coming back to the F3? Because the F3 was, I know you loved that phone. I know it was one of the yeah. one of the devices you were exciting to get. You also got it in that really nice color. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, how has it been going back to something like the F3 from uh, from Poco? Because, yeah, exactly. I also so, love the fact that Poco makes sure you know it's a Poco. Know. <laughs> the name is there. And so, so, someone was like, yeah, I kind of like the design, but I hate the way they label the back of the phone. And you're like... Yeah, but it's a Poco. I know. I mean, like, I kind of feel like we should be used to that right now. I, but it's been that way, yeah, exactly. It, it Honor, Huawei, everybody does it, but Poco yeah. does it in that big font always. So yeah, sorry. Uh, um, so, yeah. yeah, so uh, the, the video went out first on the Patreon. It did finally publish. It is public, public. Oh, okay, okay. I didn't, I didn't catch, I didn't catch um, it yet, but yeah. Obviously, if you're on the Patreon, you get the really great 4K 60 frames per second version of my review, and it helps when I'm showing some of the gaming examples because you can actually see the frame rate drop even more because I'm shooting it in 60 FPS because that's better for editorial. Um, it is such a joy. I can happily... I mean, I can happily hold up this phone and say, absolutely not a phone for me. Mm -hmm. Th this, this is a phone that is balancing price, performance, and a number of hardware compromises. Yeah. It is such a joy to use. And it completely redefines a, a consumer-grade daily driver computer experience uh, it, to this day. You know, it, the, I, I love kind of teasing the title of my video, like, oh, d a Poco F3 in 2022, could it still be worth it? And you're like, <laughs> I'm only doing that for the clickbait because this phone is such a champ. And and you, you can totally make some of those personal preference um, pros and cons, some of the compromises you might want to face. I genuinely believe xiaomi right now in terms of hardware some mm -hmm. of their software strategy still makes me twitchy and blinky mm -hmm. um 
but in terms of hardware, I think they're doing the best about taking a bucket of parts and obviously with some overlap, but they've got a, a parts bin mm -hmm. and they're making phone brands and labels in very targeted, specific consumer directions. This shares so much DNA with a black shark, you never mm -hmm. confuse it for a black shark. No. It's right nipping at the heels of a Mi 11. It's not a Mi 11. The Mi 11 it still stands as a more premium experience than what this phone has to offer. I think Xiaomi has nailed that specific consumer niche discussion. And this just stands as a crown jewel, especially at the prices that you can find it at today. Mm -hmm. You suffer none of the performance compromises of a hotter, more expensive SOC. You have to take a downgrade. It's a generation older than when it launched for camera hardware. Mm -hmm. You have to decide if you really care about that because it's still got a pretty good camera and it still shoots decent 4K video. I mean, it's like you, you tick down the list and you're like, yes, compromise here, compromise there, compromise here, compromise there. And yet I'm using the phone throughout the day and I just don't know that I care. I personally care when I try to stress it in the ways that I do my laptop replacement stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, like I'm rendering a video. I know this video would have finished off faster on my Vivo, or I know this video would have finished off faster on, uh, you know, like my OnePlus 9. Of you know, course. that's where I'm like, okay, okay, now, now this is where Juan would, would be happy to spend more, right? I can make that choice it has, for myself. Yeah, that, that features have to make sense and they have to serve a purpose. If you need them, that's when you want to- Because you've got to take it to that level. You've got yeah, to take it to the to. level of like, no, no. I'm replacing a laptop. If yeah. you're not replacing a laptop, I don't think you could tell. You can't tell me, oh, but my Twitter doesn't open as fast. You know, like, or, or who was it? Someone was really complaining, like, I've got to recommend not buying the Pixel 6 because sometimes I feel the camera is slow to launch. Like, you can't even demonstrate that. That is such a non-complaint. That is such it, a non-criticism. It's it's when you have to start picking, you know, uh, try to nitpick things just to find co excuses. I, I understand the Pixel line of conversation um, or the Pixel 6 and Pixel 6 Pro have had somewhat of a bumpy start, but they mm -hmm. are they, they are turning around and we're getting better as time goes on, which is typical to what we see with Pixels. This yeah. is a first generation tensor processor as uh, implementation that we're getting from Google. And out of the box, I can tell you that Genshin Impact totally sucked but that was just it was not tuned for it genshin yeah. the company that the uh, the developer the company uh the, that releases genshin did not f see the pixel as a phone that they wanted it to be optimized for therefore it wasn't going to run at the performance other games that were ran beautifully and yeah. as time goes on things will get better the fingerprint the security update uh the you know the the concerns and things like that you have to sure. like a it, you have to live with it and I, and I feel like we're getting there. We're, we'll be able to see even more better features, hopefully with February, as we're actually yeah, within absolutely. days of seeing that update. And, and, and I, I, I think one of the wonderful things, I, I've, I've been having so much fun with some of these, the TCLs, the Infinix, mm -hmm. now finally getting to spend some time with some Redmi's. Um, like I really haven't touched a Redmi in a really long time. It one, it we, shows just how locked up our experience here is in North America, that we really don't get these kinds of options. But two, like like I was just saying, it's, I'm using this Poco. Mm -hmm. I've now ha gotta have very specific reasons why I would step up above that Poco. And I feel there are some good sort of philosophy reasons, mm -hmm. some philosophical reasons, I should say, for why you might wanna do that. I don't like, Every time I, I, I install an app, I get served with ads because of their virus checking, even though Google Play handles all that for you. That, that's a, yeah. I, I don't like how every single Xiaomi service down to the calculator is monitoring my traffic and is being sent, that, that information is being sent up to Xiaomi servers. I don't like that that's a part of the Xiaomi contract, but I also understand if someone's making a dollars to performance kind of argument it's real tough to beat um but again it's like 
that is what an informed consumer should be looking at. So, I mean, like, Gabaletta was saying, oh, my God, the undead horde looked horrible on that Poco. The performance just tanked. This, to me, stands as, I think, one of those beautiful opportunities. The Poco F3 is so good at so many things. You've got to review it with the due diligence that we would review GPUs, desktops, laptops. Because if you really want the consumer to understand, like, what they're getting into, you've got this V8 engine in there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's a little unrefined. It's not as beautifully optimized for a number of services as some more expensive phones might be. And I can find a couple instances in my little graph, my charts of performance and benchmarking stuff. You know, like 765s can hang with it if you've got the right optimization and they've got the right support for different apps and services. And consumers can't know that if we as reviewers aren't really testing it. So like, I don't bother with Genshin because Everyone else is already talking about Genshin. I don't need to review that game mm -hmm. as a game, but I can show you how a twin stick shooter, which shouldn't be giving a Snapdragon 870 any issues, turns into a slideshow on this phone. And you're like, if we don't step up to really show these real life instances of performance where we're not testing this kind of stuff, then you don't really get a complete view. Someone buys this phone and maybe one of their favorite games just runs like total butt, you know, like yeah. that, that's, that makes us look bad. You're like, why were you recommending this phone? It's got, you know, it's, it's terrible in this, you know, top down bullet storm game that I like to play. So that, that to me is just, this is the opportunity. Poco opens the door to talk mm -hmm. about performance in the sub $400 tier, like we've, <laughs> we rarely ever get to see, but that doesn't mean we just get to say, Snapdragon 870, it's the bestest. No, we get to say, you get to choose some remarkable pros and cons. And, and I feel like the cons on this phone, mm -hmm. few people, are gonna be properly bothered by that. I, that. That's what's so lovely about where it is now. We just have to be fair and, and like actually sort of highlight what these things are good at. Yeah, no, it, it, that's one of the things I appreciated about the Poco, the F3. I got a chance to play with it earlier last year and uh, I didn't get a chance to you know play with it again um, afterwards, but I, I appreciated the fact that you brought back um, you know, a, a decent performer smartphone from, you know, from, from Poco, uh, that was definitely one of my favorites of 2021. So I definitely appreciate, uh, the Snapdragon 870's sweet swap for performance and battery life, even in 2020. So Absolutely. Good. And even it's 5G so connectivity, good. uh, because yeah. of the separate modem from the processor, the temperatures, are, let's just say this ever since the 888, we've had temperature concerns. Not to say that older SOCs didn't warm up, I'm just saying the 888 mm -hmm. onwards has had more of a power draw for performance and the, the sustainability of this performance over time, if it's not managed right, typically tends to throttling, dropped frame, processors just dropping, you know, it just, mm -hmm. there's just not an enjoyable experience for people that love to play games for an extended amount of time. This is why I like Sony's HS power control. I like, yeah. Um, I appreciate that OnePlus finally with with um, with color OS uh, optimizations. Now we give us a little bit more control over the the scheduler to at least mm -hmm. run us in somewhat of a you know like ninety percent performance to uh, to what we typically would get if we had performance mode turned on, um, which is kind of funny because Samsung's been doing it for years, but nobody tells people that it's there, and I would be very much confident in saying that most people that have Samsungs that have never watched a video about it probably don't know that they're not running it at the full potential of their phone. Oh, it's they went out and that. bought this this amazing $1,000 phone and it's Snapdragon running. 888 does everything and it's running at 1080p, 100, probably 60, 60 frames, yeah, 60 per, frames second. per second <laughs> with <laughs> throttled, uh, throttled performance. And they didn't even know. Oh, it's just so much faster than my Snapdragon and my no, Galaxy it, S10. It, it is because the S10 was also throttled and it was also running at the same... <laughs> It, it's a thing, like seriously, it's one of my things I say was in my, all my videos. It's like, first thing you need to know, this is how it's coming out of the box. But to, to truly appreciate what they were telling you at that slideshow in the presentation, you need to turn this on, you need to change this, that, and then you need to turn this on. And then you know, but understand that this is gonna suck up your battery because yeah, they designed it with those, with those features turned off. 
But and, and I just want to bring this one up here from, from Gabaletta. If I was buying a Pixel, gaming would not be my main priority. Oh, I, yeah. and, and, and I think that's oh. fair because I feel like what, what a Pixel does well is being like a good personal assistant phone. Mm -hmm. I think what's disappointing is Tensor is surprisingly more capable as a GPU than I was expecting it to be based on some of the CPU characteristics. The problem is a developer needs to really go out of their way to, to really light up that Vulkan API support. And the games that do support that, the Tensor is incredible. I mean, it's mm -hmm. really stinking powerful. Um, but, but again, I feel like most implementations of gaming and mobile gaming are going to be more like OpenGL, where the Tensor is going to fall noticeably behind um, Snapdragon Snap 888s. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's a we bummer because there's so much more potential, but it's on developers to realize it. And you've got to kind of do that on a much limited... I mean, again, you wouldn't just be doing it for the Pixel. You'd be doing it for a number of Android phones. But, I mean, again, you can't even benchmark OpenGL on a Pixel in Geekbench. It, it's, so it needs to it's, make sense for the developer. And yeah. unfortunately, it's a numbers thing at this point, which is, do they, do, they, do they spend enough time where there's so little amount of pixels that are available on the market right now to optimize their, their apps to run on that as well as other devices? Or do they still support the, the base that they feel like gets them the most uh, revenue? Because at the end of the day, they are, they're looking at it as, how do we maintain this business and how do we keep going? At some point, we'll get the we'll get the support, but I don't think it's on the high priority of the, uh, you know, one first thing, check, let's make sure to get Tensor yeah. and Pixel uh, set up. And as he said, I, I don't think you're right. Most people that buy Pixels are are, are, are either going in for, for to the performance, basically, you know, more of a, it used to be more stock Android experience. Now it's more of a, you know, the Google-esque. The Google um, you know, flavor. Material. Yeah. It's a Google flavor. Material U is absolutely Google's skin fully named now um, uh, over Android um, or AOSP as we typically know it. Um, and, you know, again, it, it's a flavor. You got to like it. You got to enjoy what they do. Whereas but, if you spend all the money and the effort to improve Vulkan support, mm -hmm. it's a lateral move on most phones. Yeah. I mean, you really think about like the kind of benchmarking numbers you see differentiating OpenGL from Vulkan, and we're talking like 5% differences, if that, on most phones. So do you expend all that energy making sure your game supports these APIs versus those APIs, and the one phone that's really going to benefit from that? Or I guess I should say also the, the last year's Dimensity had really strong Vulkan scores too. Yeah. But again, yeah. it's it's a much, much, much smaller community of gamers on mobile who would see that that performance improve. Mm -hmm. Mo the, the vast majority of people would see that that performance just just maintain. It's it, it's, you, it's, yeah, it's you maintain would expend all of that developer effort for no discernible change. And and you're yeah, it, especially depending on the games too. If if they're if the games that you're supporting are at best 60 frames per second uh, on, on most, which is, I mean, don't get me wrong. Some some apps do have a hard time sustaining 60, 60 frames per second for an extended amount of time, which is surprising. You'd think at this point, 2022, 60 frames is like the solid bare minimum. No, that's still no. somewhat of a, a, a fuzzy line for some <laughs> companies. And um, w we, we learned quite quickly how the OnePlus 9 Pro last year did the thermal control to be able to try to leverage and give you more of a consistent performance at 60p. Mm -hmm. uh, not the 120, not the 90, 60p is what that what that device was trying to give you the best experience. Yeah, at. flattened um, it out hard. <laughs> it is, it is. Um, I'll, I will, I want to actually did want to ask one quick question for you though. Um, yeah. I know with the Redmi's and so on, you haven't had them that much. Um, mm -hmm. And based on like coming from a TCL, because we both had a chance to play mm -hmm. with the TCL 20 series last year. Um, this year, obviously, we're still waiting for the TCL 30. I think the 30, the V30. I think the Verizon, yeah. The Verizon version came out like a week ago or something like that. And yeah, I think, I think that that's going to be, I think, their first big push. Their first, it their seems first to big be push. their strongest carrier um, relationship. Uh, Verizon has generation. had very, very strong, I mean, 
keep in mind, like the the Xperia Pro is a Verizon exclusive yeah. because of the the ultra wideband um, comp comp you know, compatibility there. Um, TCL, and I, I'm not trying to make sure you point to TCL, but uh, the Tab Pro. Uh, so I use this as my uh, my Peloton app uh, tablet. Uh, also Verizon ultra wideband, very yeah. good uh, configurations there. Um, with the Redmi Note 11 and 11S that you have, I know you're setting up the 11S. Um, mm -hmm. Do you feel like this is something that you could recommend as a phone for a friend or for somebody that's looking for that price point? Or are you thinking it's more um, as a spare device or something to that effect? Because and we're, it's a little early, I realize. I'm like, I'm yeah. trying to pull at something a little early. I've played a little bit more longer with the 11. So I have a mm -hmm. little bit of a better baseline on that. but. I'm, I'm hoping the 11s even makes the conversation better and again i'll, I'll know more with this one when i get a chance yeah. to use it so so this has been an ongoing conversation that i've been trying to whittle whittle out like carve out um mm -hmm. the the phone that really sort of surprised me was the cool pad i want to say it was almost four years ago that i got to play with one of those is it and... lenovo Right? Or... No, 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 no. I, I mean, the name of the company was CoolPad. Oh, the, I think oh okay. it, like the name, the the actual model of the phone was something like Illumin, Illumina, or something like. That. Oh, wait, wait, wait. CoolPad makes those watches, right? Am I, yeah, uh, or... they, they, I don't think they make phones anymore. But yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah. They, I... they were showing up in a few. Like there was an AT and T, and I think there was like a one of the low cost carriers, like Cricket, was stocking okay. them. And and prior to that, that like. 300 ish and lower dollar territory i i was very anxious about which one of my relatives would walk into a boost mobile get a phone for free for free for signing up on a new contract and then end up with a miserable experience and i'm using this cool pad and it completely would not have met any of my needs but it had a decent radio, like it, it It got good reception. It had a big screen that was nice and bright. I think it had lower resolution, but it was still like, this is still a, like I would watch a movie on this, that's fine. The speakers were decent, the headphone jack. I mean, like it was, it was a perfectly acceptable communicator and content consumer. Mm -hmm. And increasingly, Again, with TCLs, with Infinix, I have fewer and fewer reservations about recommending these kinds of phones as being people's main drivers. We have to have every expectation in check that you're probably not going to get a lot of software support, not a lot of long-term attention for updates, but that's a part of the lower price that you're paying. There's a reason why a pretty stripped Pixel 5a is is like two hundred dollars more than one of these phones? Yeah, we have every expectation that a Pixel Five A is going to get excellent longer term software support. So that's got to be built and, into and the software, price up yeah, front. Patch update as well. Yeah. No, no, so sure. so as long as we can have that kind of, I mean, there are some family members where I just don't trust that we can have that conversation, and they won't just their eyes won't just glaze over, and they'll they'll tune me out. Um, but as long as you can kind of recommend based on what they really think they need and what um what what you think they can handle in terms of hardware versus software i mm -hmm. i have no qualms i mean zero from the poco m4 to these redmi uh, my my experiences with infinix with tcl um there's nothing that i i really feel prevents someone for using one of these as a two-year device and your cost of ownership per year is ridiculous Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. imagine the the amount of the length of time you would need to work off on a seven or eight hundred dollar phone to get the same bang for buck in this tier. If you're being honest about your your compute needs, because you you don't get anything more out of a high performance phone if you're an average consumer. You're getting the exact same experience because it's dictated by what apps and services you use. Exactly. Your TikTok didn't get better. <laughs> it's the same. Your Instagram didn't get faster. <laughs> it's the same. So, I mean, to me, like, I'm, I'm handling this Note 11, and it's, I'm getting that vibe where I was with the Poco M4. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, I could never rock this phone. This phone's amazing. I love it. This is not a phone for me, though. Yeah, but I, I love it. It's great. 
<laughs> I, and I, and it, that's one of the things I, I pre so you, you, you actually kind of uh, touched on that very, very clearly. The device comes with a 5,000 milliamp year battery, a 33 watt charger, which to start is a large that's battery to a fast good. charger as well. It's already faster than most devices. It's it faster than a Pixel. <laughs> I, it's faster than a Samsung till next year, um, it, or till the twenty two comes out. But um, what I what I'm what I look at it and I see a ten eighty p AMOLED display with a ninety hertz refresh rate, a large a stereo speakers that are surprisingly loud. Like I'm surprised how much they're able to push sound out of they, it. They they get a they're little dedicated. shrill, they get a yeah, little so I, peaky, I, but I but still, about, yeah, like surprisingly they're, good for they're sub 200 dollars <laughs> see xiaomi went xiaomi was like looking at okay like how do we make these speakers better in somebody's mind uh, basically we can make sure that they can hear them in, in any environment but uh yeah no definitely then i say that as well on my uh my note 11 it, they're not the, the most clearest uh, uh, speakers on the market, and they do get a little bit, when they go too high, they, it's like the audio just gets blown out a little bit. You, you want to tone it down a little bit, and you do need to do the cupping on the side so that you get yeah. the audio to bounce back towards you because it has two dedicated speakers that are facing outwards, not towards you, which I would have hoped um, it would have been something that, you know, basically that would have been something approached. But it's still very hard to not recommend this. Like I can imagine, you know, like my son being able to use a phone like this as his first smart smartphone because oh yeah, right now he's 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 rocking the um, the flip go the go flip four, and I know I, I I'm not gonna lie I know he wants to move up to a smartphone. He doesn't he's not very happy being stuck in that ecosystem. Um, it's it's just it's not meant for him. It's a perfect phone for different people, but for him it's not. But content consumption on something like that, you could spend hours watching t uh, shows and movies and and never even barely make a dent because of the resolution and the processor and the configuration that you get. Yeah. And those are the things I appreciate. I think most of us do that. We're on our phones. We're consuming content. We're watching YouTube videos. We're you know Netflix or whatever. And these devices just it's hard not to recommend for that type of an experience. Um, and with good lighting, I feel like the cameras can still perform pretty decently. And yeah. I think most, most people will will get that. Uh, I just, I wish we had them here. That's that's one thing I, I, I yeah. I mean, again, it's, a lot it's, of our videos. Yeah, it, it, yeah, no joke. Um, I, I mean, I've 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 been front loading my ire with the North American review powder for a while now, but it, it it's still like that for us becomes that opportunity. I, I completely understand the reservations that some people have when you bring up TCL and they say, but you're only going to get a year of software support. You're only going to get one major up update. And you're like, I understand that. But we've been having these conversations since like, I don't know, the, the LG Optimus, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I feel that there is a critical conversation that's being missed for people who can make an informed decision about hardware versus software. Sebastian Lobos brings up another good point too, where there's just that like, you know, there, there's that truthy or that like colloquial fear because Apple actually did slow down your phone back in the older iPhone days with software updates that now consumers and techies have this kind of vibe of, well, maybe I don't want to update my phone because your, your new software is just going to slow my phone down. And then you get some teething pains on like Android 12 and it kind of reinforces that urban legend of that. Mm -hmm. And so... If, if that's the case and you can keep up to date with your app updates, if we can still get some reasonable support through like Google Play services for maybe some of the nastier bugs that might hit at like, at that that kind of, um, uh, I forget what that, that's called, not the kernel level, but you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. um, if, if, that's, if that's what we can do to kind of stem the tide and people can kind of make up some of the differences with just good smartphone behavior and not taking any stupid risks, I feel like you can mitigate the the fear of well but three years from now i won't get a new android operating system update you're like yeah but you're spending 70 dollars a year to operate this phone are you going to use a phone for 10 years if you spend 700 dollars on that I phone know. no they're still going to be in the same yeah it, I mean, you'll do better. You will do better. You'll do two to three be, years better, but you're not going to do 10 years better. 
No, and and not only that, <laughs> and not only that. Anytime you update, it, it, Android twelve has been a learning lesson. It's been a learning experience. Android eleven was actually very very much in the same boat. The update to eleven from uh, from ten was not a not a smooth ride for many devices. Actually, a lot of people were having concerns. So twelve was in the same boat, depending on the smartphone that you're getting and how long you've been using it. Um, three years worth of software update. Yeah, the software experience may not be the best uh, and you may want to re reset your phone back up and restore your data uh, just to yeah. kind of get that fresh out of the box type of uh, Android update kind of experience. Um, but speaking of, of, you know, those type of things that you know, we know, we do need to appreciate the fact that it does come into the price. And that's what we're, this is a unique thing that you need to keep in mind when you're buying a phone is how long do you think you're going to be wanting to keep it? What do you yeah. need out of this phone? And what can this phone do better than what you currently have? Because if it's not meeting your expectation, you're not going to be happy with whatever company you go with. And chances yeah. are, you're probably not going to buy them again, because you probably it was a match conversation. Um, um, companies or phone companies, uh, stores typically don't do a very good job of explaining to you some of the options that you have that may be at a lower Sadly, cost. No. Yeah, you walk in and you're seeing the, you know, the displays and everything. And all of those are the most expensive things that they have, the highest commission, whatever they need to do. Um, and you go into Best Buy and it's the same conversation. You know, you go in at the middle, you know, not geek squat, but in the middle of the show floor, that's all you see. I mean, see the Best Buy out here, you basically walk into an Apple store when you walk into Best Buy. It, uh, Best Buy. And then you have to walk right? around the side of it and then you're in a carrier store and you're assaulted by Samsung. And, and it, Samsung. You slash have to actively go out of your way to sort of overcome the C. sales rep recommendations to even consider something but, outside of that Samsung Apple dichotomy. Yeah, and, but I, I don't think the question is, that it, 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 it's not just that it's it's more about i don't think they're trying to sell the person the phone that fits them it's more of the no. they think they have a one fit one solution that fits everybody and we should need you to fit we yeah. need to fit you either in in team samsung or team apple and you know what are you coming from and okay keep going let's go next person next person so um tech level <laughs> yeah mobile opinions you walk into an at t <laughs> store what store. iphone or samsung can it's we sell you today no it, it is it, that's it is flat out um t-mobile is the exact same thing uh pixel smartphones at t-mobile stores are sitting in the corner somewhere that you don't yeah. even see as soon as you get in and it's a joke uh but i, I appreciate the fact that at least that pixels and oneplus devices are in retail stores mm -hmm. um you know at least we well, have and, some and we should also mention you know like with the death of lg Mm -hmm. Samsung didn't eat up that market share. Motorola had the best second half of 2021 that they've had in years. And so Pixels didn't really make up a significant amount of difference. Even 2021 though was a tough, yeah, 2021 was a tough, was a weird year for Pixels. Motorola came back hard. So, so Pixels, no, I mean, what's exciting is Pixels, um, Again, if you advertise a product, people will buy it. What a genius concept. Pixels have had the strongest year over year oh, since this year the beginning sure. of the Pixel line. Mm -hmm. But what I mean is like there was that vacuum of new budget phones, new mm -hmm. K-series, new Stylo. Those were all over the Boost Mobiles and the Cricket Wirelesses and, and all of the low-cost carriers. With LG out of the game, Samsung wasn't pushing A50s. No. That, that that didn't make any appreciable jump to occupy that market share. Remember, like, I, I think people forget, like, two years ago, LG was still double digits in the United States. It's a big deal when Samsung and Apple are like 70 to 80% of the market. Mm -hmm. When LG was like 12 to 15, that's huge for it's North America. Chunk. Exactly. And so yeah, yeah. Motorola, Motorola is just vacuuming up all of that business right now. And so I think it's going to really be on, on Google finding some success with a Pixel 6a. Now that the marketing of the Pixel 6 has been kind of uh, marinating for a mm -hmm. while, they can double down. Tensor, Android 12, teething pains, the mainstream phone's going to be better polished right out of the box. I think we'll have very high expectations on how that phone performs. And... I'm assuming somewhere in the $450 to $500 territory, maybe about $100 cheaper than a Pixel 6. Um, we've got very good expectations there that it's going to be a solid performer. 
Mm -hmm. that still leaves 400 and lower. And just that's Motorola that. territory now. Like yeah. that's that's where Motorola is just going to dominate. And so it's going to be way easier for people to walk in, buy phone, walk out. I think we're actually going to see like that hot competition place. And I I have high hopes. What is it? The 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 TCL thirty is is like a it's like a three hundred dollar phone. It's a three hundred. Right? Yeah, yeah, no, three hundred dollar phone. Even on Verizon. A Verizon UW phone, phone at three hundred mm -hmm. has some has some legs, like. That phone's and, not going to be... They have, a, they have be... another version that's coming to T-Mobile as well. T-Mobile and Metro, I think. Not ultra-wideband, but 5G, of course. Sub-6 5G support. In, in, but in also... $300 matters to a lot of those people out there. They're going to see 5G. They're going to see $300. On, on, you know, especially at that crossover point. People who might be prepay customers or people who might be postpay customers but right at that dividing line of lower lower low cost versus you know like some of the more expensive plans that Verizon has to offer having that $300 option makes that so much more accessible and so yeah. Google has a gap there Samsung has a gap there Apple has a gap there that's where we're going to see some of this stuff really blow up. Motor Motorola is definitely uh, representing and, and doing their job in, in that department, which I appreciate. Um, and I saw the comment right there. Uh, oh, hey, Adam is in the chat. Hope yeah, you're doing Adam's well, man. in the hey, chat. Man. What's up, buddy? Hey, I uh, hope you guys... Uh, Adam and I both jumped on Scott's podcast and we were like, well, Scott, <laughs> let's explain how SOCs work to you. <laughs> like, okay. It was a really fun conversation. I haven't had a chance. I mean, like, on, on one of those those other sort of someone else's podcast, you know, like we, we do, we've done this too, you and me. Oh, yeah. yeah where yeah, we no. go on someone else's show and you're like, ah, we're just going to suck all the oxygen out of the room for a couple of minutes. Just sit tight. We're going to explain just, some stuff. It's, it's one of those fun <laughs> things. But no, Adam, definitely a very cool guy. Got a chance to see him at CES literally less than a month ago. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll see each other at another event in the near future. But, uh, you know, I was, um, it, it is very, it's, it's just, we got to see how things go. I, 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 there's a lot of things I do. I, I'm trying to find a good way to segue into the conversation that this guy is. I feel like that was probably just the best way to segue over is just, I don't like, know. Of another and way now, bam, here it is. And now then. The P50 Pro. No, um, the reason why that I wanted business. to talk about that, we were talking about Google services and so on and different devices. And this device, obviously, of of so, of so a it's of a lineage of a, dev a series of devices that we we loved covering. The Mate series was definitely great. I had a chance to play around with the Mate 40 Pro. Um, and then finally now getting a chance to play with the P50 Pro, the photography friend of... Um, well, the photography, the the phone for any kind of enthusiast that loves photography from Huawei, mm -hmm. and this is the best of what they have to offer. And um, I, they okay. So I've had this for literally less than a week. I haven't had it. Tomorrow it turns a week with me because I, I got the phone the day after we had our show last week. Yeah, I didn't sure, know when it sure. was going to show up. Juan and I were talking after the show. It's like I have no idea if they're going to send me this phone, if this is going to show. And then on Friday shows up, and then they're knocking on the door. DHL is like, okay, um, it's been it's been a minute since I've had a chance to play with a with a Huawei phone uh, or non Google phone, Google version of Huawei for doc <laughs> photography. You say mm -hmm. yes, say more. No, um, Huawei's always been at least on the Mate and the P-Series, I've always had, ever since the P20 Pro, because this is when, when I started really using the P-Series from Huawei. I was mm -hmm. at their launch event with it because it was, I was in Paris with the family uh, to, for a family event at the time. And it happened to be at the same time. So I, I was like, hey, can I show up? And they let me in. Um, the, the device is solid build, solid performance. Um, EMUI on this is still very, very good. EMUI desktop is still strong, present, works beautifully with the next dog. That was like mm -hmm. the first thing I did with that phone. Um, <laughs> it's having to find different ways of using it when I don't have to use Google services has been my challenge. And I think that gotcha. was my only challenge of this phone. Uh, pedal search has been has improved quite a bit, like a lot over what I've seen in the earlier generations. And what I mean by essentially is searching and finding the APKs and installing more things mm -hmm. are actually showing up in the in the app gallery as well as pedal search verified apps. 
Uh, but installing like Instagram, Twitter, um, for me at least for editing tools, like video editing tools, image editing tools, also very readily available. About the only thing, and then of course you could always do a lot of, surprisingly if you don't know, um, Chrome does not require Google Play services to operate as a browser. So mm -hmm. you can run Chrome apps or Chrome um, websites and save them as uh, like shortcuts on your desktop for YouTube, for different things that you normally would have done using nice. an app. And I used still, to do that with Windows Phone all the time. Yeah, so th there's yeah. Th there's that little trick that a lot of people don't realize you could do. Like I can get YouTube to work the normal way and so on. Um, and it was just that, that adjustment period on there. Uh, and for me, it... <laughs> The cameras on this is actually very like the auto focusing is so sharp so quick like i was mm -hmm. i was doing an unboxing and i posted this reel before the show and i was turning the uh, the redmi uh the note 11 pro 5g like i turn it around from one side to the other and it loses catches focus jumps on focuses right on top and knows exactly what it's looking for um the pictures are true to, true to nature like how they look like i went to the Descanso garden and mm -hmm. shot a whole bunch of video so anyways it, it's in I, I still need a little bit more time to to get the full review version out of but i do have a video going up tomorrow about some of the things i like um about the p50 pro and the fact that while we're still in the game i appreciate that what they're able to contribute at some point uh, oh and i do want to say that this is the first time i've got a chance to use a p50 or a p uh, device from huawei that is not running a kirin i that was like this is the 888 4g so it's it's an interesting approach to a smartphone from huawei like i feel like okay this is running hardware i'm i'm used to um, yeah and it doesn't run as hot it's weird it doesn't run as hot as i thought it would be I, you know, it's, it's, I feel when you take that time to optimize for the A88 and you sacrifice some of that, the tippy top peak tier or even 5G. Yeah. There's no 5G modem in this. It, this. I think it helps sort of rein in maybe what makes the A88 such a, 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 a testy SOC for so many other manufacturers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and as Sebastian is, is saying that apparently it was also um, available in Canada. So I think Huawei is starting to find some of their oh. alternative distribution routes to trying to get their phones sold again. This could be a very interesting year, a shakeup. The Google Play services thing matters, but I don't think it matters as much to the determined pocket computer user. It yeah, matters yeah. to a mainstream audience that is going to value familiarity. Mm -hmm. But I'm increasingly interested in trying some of these other ROMs that like secure ROMs or, um, you know, breathe new life into an old phone or more. Yeah, Linux like lineage. Based. Lineage is literally known over the yeah. years of what what CM used to be back in the day. Cyanogen mod used to be back in the day. Mm -hmm. That the, the life, the second life for any any device. Uh, lineage has been doing an amazing job of continuing support and oh, yeah. and supporting more and more devices. So those are things, obviously, um, you know, and Calyx OS, I guess, uh, oh, Calyx. Hopefully uh, I'm saying that correctly. Greg, Greg, I usually have this thing going on with us on the Saturday on the on the Android base show. We always ask Greg what he's running this week because he's always switching ROMs on his OnePlus 8 or depending which phone he's using. Um, you know, it's one of those. <laughs> so what, what, I'll, what I'll be interested in hearing from you too is yeah. um, Huawei always maintained some type of photography tech advantage. If it was dual camera sensors, if it was Quad. multiple camera sensors well, for different focal lengths, Mm -hmm. um, they they were early to returning to some of the the big camera sensor experiments that I feel like the the Nokia Lumia devices we mm -hmm. left off on. Um, I'll be curious to see what what your thoughts are because you just recently played with the Vivo, the Pixel has the GN1. Yeah. We've significantly closed the gap on camera sensor sizes where Huawei used to be the only game in town. Now we've got a couple players. Even a OnePlus 9 mm -hmm. has a respectably large main camera sensor. And a, good, um, a very, very respectable ultrawide. Well, yeah. And it's, I mean, like, if I'm looking up the specs, like, I just pulled up the P50 on GSM Arena, and it's, like, mm -hmm. 50 megapixel sensor. And, like, that tells you nothing. What's the sensor size? What, exactly. what is it a pixel? How is it? Just any other information that 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 would matter. I'm assuming it's probably another one of their one over one point two eight. 
okay. inch I'll sensors. If, if anything, just a hair bigger than the GN1, but not yeah. like radically bigger than the GN1. And it, 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 yeah, no, I, I can see that. Yeah, I, I, did, I did the same thing because I didn't, I did not know them off heart, uh, by heart. Uh, the 50 on the main, it's an F1, it's uh, F1.8, 22 millimeter equivalent wide uh, view. Mm -hmm. PDAF would, of course, laser auto focusing and uh, optical images, OIS on that. A 64 uh, periscope tele. So the, the, the periscope on this was one of the ones I've been testing a lot when I went to the, the gardens. Um, mm -hmm. The, the, the flowers that they had were set up in different positions where you couldn't get that close to get those images or to get the greenery. So you, I was having to use the, tel the telephoto lenses and jumping to be able to bring it in. And they are very flexible and very, I, I, and I'll, I'll show you, I'll, I'll show some pictures obviously tomorrow and, and so on. Some of the things I really appreciate in there. Uh, but I need a little bit more time to kind of put things together to make it mm -hmm. um, uh, a good, well thought, well rounded story. Hopefully next week. But um, 4K60 is solid on both front and back sensors, which is nice. something that I appreciate. Um, and they've done, um, like I said, the, the UI, everything else. It just it's comfortable. It's EMUI. I I I, I realize that this is obviously Harmony. It, it's not the same. But it feels the same. The skin just makes it feel like it runs yeah. the same. Um, and I have mine set up to Paris because of the. It, you can't set it up to the U.S. It's either U.K. or Paris. Um, <laughs> yeah, you can. You can. You could try. It won't work. Uh, it That's does funny. not have a region available because it doesn't have an app store in the U.S. So if you try to set it up to anything, it doesn't find it. So the only ones that it has, it has that I can use is U.K. or Paris. So. Uh, so far, very impressed. Cameras have been very nice. Um, I've been editing some content on that as well. Uh, as I'm trying to wean myself off the Vivo a little bit, I'm not going to lie, I need to find a replacement, get my hand into something else that does I, I feel, I feel you're going to have <laughs> a lot of fun. I'm going to have a lot of withdrawal. Switching That's what it I'm over. <laughs> I, I feel like this is, again, you're talking about the camera stuff. You're, you're going to do just fine switching it um, over. I, um, the, the one question I've had, and I haven't seen yeah. a lot of people kind of talk about that. Is there any opportunity to like, like, can you load up the Amazon App Store? Uh, so yes, uh, secondary app stores are supported. Um, I haven't tried Amazon, but I've tried uh, basically just you know your standard, like APK Pure has an installer that you can yeah. use APK Mirror, and so you could just download the APK Pure app. Um, you, it it simplifies. So the pedal has gotten better in the sense of, like I said, if there's an update off of APK Pure, so you don't have to download the APK Pure app, uh, installer. It works straight into pedal. Um, you jump back in, and it tells you if there's an update. And you could just download nice. the updated APK. It not only downloads it from a simple click button, as opposed to having to click it, scroll down, find the find right oh, right yeah, file. Yeah, yeah. It it clicks, it downloads, and it pushes you into it. The auto install option comes in, and it it's much more streamlined. So it's better. It's not as simple as automatic update, but it's still mm -hmm. like I was having some problems with Instagram posting a reel. Like it kept crashing on me. I'm like, why would it be like that? And then sure enough, there was an update. I downloaded because Instagram updates every day, right? Um, yeah. Uh, I downloaded the update for Instagram and then everything worked fine. So yeah. It, uh, well, I was just curious, but but I was curious about Amazon because- Were you thinking about uh, just Amazon or, Huawei. Or, uh, or- Yeah. No, but I was oh. saying because of the whole Huawei entities list ban, would Amazon try to prevent you from using their app store? And so anyway, it's not something you've got to, you've got to figure out now. I just thought it'd be interesting to see. And it's funny because I still do have like a crazy collection of apps back from when Amazon was doing like free app of the day and stuff. Oh, you remember? Oh my God. I remember that. <laughs> I was like, I've got a bunch of games on there. They're older games, but they're still fun to play. Um, or, or also what is the, um, F Droid, that was the F one. So F Droid, so yeah. Uh, F Droid should totally work on that. Uh, absolutely. Uh, F, the uh, Aurora App Store. Let me see if I can download this. Oh no, it's taking me to Google Play. I don't want to go to go wait Google Play, Amazon Shopping. No. Apps and games, Amazon. <laughs> uh, use it. I've used Amazon. Get the I'm Amazon. So do you have one? Time. I've never. I, I've. I've, I've always been curious i suppose i could have asked you know other people too i just hadn't really thought to really oh. push it oh file might be harmful what i'm downloading uh -oh. the app store straight from amazon and the uh, and huawei is <laughs> like no thank you i yeah. heard amazon just raised their amazon right. prime <laughs> rates and we're yeah we're not going to be okay no. okay let's go open amazon app store 
Uh, help us select the correct app store for your location. Select your region. Okay, so this is. Uh, it seems like it's installing fine. It does. It doesn't block it. Mm -hmm. Uh, but that little, uh, that little <laughs> asking it may be harmful. Uh, which one do you want to do? Already a customer, sign in. It seems like it's fine. I don't see it. I don't know if it'll, it should be fine. I think third-party app stores are per, are fine uh, because they're not based on any kind of, um, they're not selling, like, you know, you're not buying Amazon apps. You're buying third-party apps that are typically available in like f and some of the other application systems. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that that infringes on the third-party third, ent third party entity kind of conversation. Well, that's um, cool. Yeah. So, you know, it, uh, but I'll, I'll definitely play a little bit more. I didn't log into it yet. It installed and it seems to, allow me to go through that process i would imagine if it didn't if it didn't install then it would have been a problem uh but yeah f droid should be fine um it, but pedal search honestly has has made it very i haven't had the need to look for other things to install apps from so f droid the, uh, sorry the pedal search is actually very good like for for nice. for, for for their options that they have in there uh for updates and for installing applications and surprisingly enough to tell you if an app is optimized for the phone or not like it, the test lab was not it, it told me that it wasn't may not be compatible with the version that you're running on uh on, on this version of uh of, well it's not android but you know what i mean um on yeah. emui uh the build that i have so i didn't install my tesla app because i was trying to put that in there to try to use it because i'm getting 4g lte on it but since it doesn't mm -hmm. do 5g uh but the Tesla app I couldn't install. So that was like, oh, okay. So I still need to carry a second phone. I don't, <laughs> care. I don't carry the card. I, I always carry my phone. So that's my connection to my to the car. So uh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Try to <laughs> stick man stunt. Oh, yeah. Um so we are kind of reaching that point of the time uh, of the show. Um we're kind of like, you know, bringing it together. Bring it's it been home. an interesting bringing it home, absolutely. Uh it's been an interesting week. We are we're definitely knee deep in red meads. But it is a very pleasant experience, and I think I'm, I'm yeah. definitely looking forward to seeing what the Pro 5G does, um, which I think will be very similar point with uh, with what you have with the sensor because you both we're both running the 108 on the 11s and the Pro. Um, I'm Poco, I'm really stoked. Like the the MediaTek, I kind of want to dig into what this 96 can do now. I, I'm 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 still waiting to see which where when we're going to start seeing the first Dimensity 9000 phone on the market. I want to see something released. Like seriously, um, I'm hoping Oppo sticks to their guns and they go with the Dimensity, as they said, and we'll get a we'll get a chance to see that flavor hopefully very soon. We're almost at that point. I feel like the five, the Find X five, and whatever the next generation stuff, we need to start seeing how things are going there. Um, yeah. So, I want to say first, thank you very much, Juan, for taking some of your time to hang out with us again on this beautiful first. Thursday. Um, thanks to Greg, Sebastian, um, you know, Adam, everybody hanging out with us, uh, you know, Tech Love and Mama, um, Michael Corrigan in there, of course, uh, the, bio, the uh, bio, scoop is in the chat as well, as usual. Uh, everybody hanging out with us on this beautiful Thursday afternoon. Hopefully, time as time goes on, we'll start being able to share more content. I've, I'm still trying to figure out a groove of getting back into it. This, my relationship with YouTube in the last couple of weeks has been very weird. Um, and, but yeah, that's a, that's a conversation for a time and a different day and different time. Um, we'll see you guys hopefully very, very soon again next week for another episode of the best of our week. Keep in mind, it's going to be on a Friday. Um, it's going to be live with my, uh, my buddy and myself. We're going to be hanging out at the park and, uh, we're going to be doing that closure for our, uh, you know, tech, um, I guess tech exchange, tech challenge, you know, productivity, mm -hmm. photography. And, um, you know, we'll see how things kind of go. Uh, I, by the way, I love the pajama show, uh, the pajama uh, street. That, <laughs> that was did. fun. That, did go that was a well. fun, chill, easy kickback, have fun kind of thing. Uh, so we'll definitely see how that goes. And um, I'll see you, of course, everybody on Saturday with the Android Bay. If you are watching this or listening, uh, if you're interested in listening to the audio version of this podcast, we do have an audio podcast that goes out um, uh, it, actually within a day or so from the show. So last week was a little bit later, but yeah, um, definitely check that out. Link for that will be in the description. Uh, and of course, we'll round that up again with SCGQA next Monday uh, for another episode with our buddy Juan for all those Qs and As from everybody. Take care, everybody. Yay. Have a good night. Stay safe. And we'll see you next week.